Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Cardboard Addicts Podcast. I am Ren, and I'm uh, joined by the crew here. We got uh, Harley, Grumpy, Sudan, and Zen. And uh, if you guys didn't know, Zen actually went to the Florida convention uh, this weekend or this past weekend when you guys are hearing this. But lies. Uh, all lies. We have quite a bit to, uh, or rather, he's got a, quite a bit to tell us about that right after we roll the intro. Boom. What's up, Legion of Zen? All right, we are on the way to the Florida TCG convention. It's going to be fun. Let's do this road trip. What's going on Legion of Zen? We are here at the Florida TCG convention. Going to be making quite a few videos from here. So uh, let's check it out. Let's see what cool stuff they've got. And uh, they got three different rooms. So it's going to be pretty awesome to, uh, to check all this stuff out. All right, let's talk to Alex from DSG Grading. We're going to be talking about their service and MetaZoo. Let's get into it. This is the only polycarbonate case in the industry. Uh, everybody else is acrylic. Okay. These things are shatterproof. You cannot crack them. You cannot. You're not going to be able to shatter these open. I mean, you can break them open, but it'll damage the cars inside. Right. Uh, it's also got UV filtering protection in it. So also the only UV filtered encapsulation on the market. So, so you know you have your. A lot of car shops have their cars out on display. You got the fluorescent lighting. Uh, they call it a greening effect, but what it is is just light damaging cars. You're not going to get that from these. You're going to get protection. You don't want to leave them out in the sun uh, because that's going to get through anything. But you've got at least some protection. Display. Uh, second thing that really stands, makes us stand apart is the QR code on the back of our slabs. So we are fully transparent in grading. We want to show the customers exactly why they get the grades that they do. So what we do is we just take the uh, take a scan of the QR code on the back. It's a little hard in this lighting, but there we go. And that QR code is going to take you to a grade report that explains everything about the card. So you got a high-res scan image of the front of the card and a high-res scan image of the back of the card. You can zoom in just to take a look at the edges. And this can be brought up, by the way, um, uh, on the computer screen. So like, let's say someone's selling this on eBay, you can actually pull this grade report up, the QR code from the back of the screen. So you can check the condition of the card before you buy it and verify that that is actually an eight, like you would say. That's pretty so awesome. what we have right here, we see the edge damages, what we marked. Yeah. So we dinged it for edge damage in yeah. zone one. And all of our, where there's four quadrants on the front and four quadrants on the back. And that's how we get all uh, our grades calculated. So you'll see on quad in zone one, we got edge, edge. Zone two, we got top edge. But no, uh, two also, oh, zone one also has surface damage. You got okay. a two surface damage that'll be in there. And that way the, the customer can come in there, uh, the collector can come in there and look exactly where that damage is and see, yep, that's why I got dinged there. Right. So then you got the bottom edges over here in zone three. You got a bottom edge on zone four, the side one. Uh, the pack was great on this card. You got a little bit of a surface uh, issue right here and in that zone, in zone six. Right. But all the edges and corners were great. It was the front of the car that really brought the, car, the grade down on this one. So, but that's how we have transparency and introduce uh, uh, our grades to the community for trust. You want to build that trust relationship. You want to show you that, yes, that is an eight, and this is why it's an eight. Right. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that's right now, it's missing from the grading. Because every other company that we've seen is, you know, they don't tell you. They don't tell you exactly what your card uh, got or why, or you just kind of, okay, well, the centering is off or whatever the case is, but... Nobody really tells you anything. Well, we want to be accountable. Right. We want to be held accountable to the collector. So we don't just put our grades out there and say, this is what it is, accept it, that's it. That's the way it is. We want to have consistency. We want to have objectivity. We want to eliminate the subjectivity. And we want to be transparent and show the, uh, everybody why these cards are grading the way they are. Sure. There is a huge amount of money difference between the nines and the tens and the eights. So you send your investment in, you want to make sure you know that that is an accurate grade and it's right. true to your card. Right. So the more information we wanted to we wanted to provide as much information as possible to show you that this is why your card graded that way. Awesome, man. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Alex. Alex. Yeah. And what's your uh, what's your role with DSG? So I'm a partner. I'm the uh, head. Uh, I'm head of technology and design. So I do a lot of the design work, a lot of the media. You'll see me out there on Instagram and other places. Uh, but I work with the artists to design the labels. I designed all of our other labels that we have, right. our custom labels, uh, and the program. Gotcha. 
Right. And uh, what do we have here? Can you can you kind of just walk us through what we're yes. uh, what we're looking at? This is the first ever. This is the first ever graded master set of Kickstarter and medicine. This is the entire complete collection of Kickstarter. Right. All the reverse hollows and hollows are right here on display, and then we have all of the. Uh, um, the uh, non hollows in this binder. So this this collection, by the way, was uh, um, curated by Pokizu. Okay. So that's Nick from Pokizu. Right. He went through extreme lengths to get all these cards. Yeah. And you know, they, it cost quite a bit to, to put this kind of a collection together. But he wanted to have the first graded collection of medicine. And what's the better way? What's the best way to do this? I mean, this collection right here has a Medizu artist label on it. Right. <laughs> so this is perfect for his purpose collection. He's he, he is the first one to have this label out there, by the way. Yeah. So he, we, he got an exclusive because of the partnership that we had uh, and bringing this collection of Medizu to us. Very cool. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, oh, yeah. your time. And uh, this is actually really interesting stuff. Yeah, glad to, glad to provide information. I want to be out there. I want to let, us, let everybody know about what we're doing here. Uh, we're not just a flash in the pan, you guys. We have a lot of experience in grading, even though as a company we've been around for only about six or well, four months now. Uh, the experience of our founders in this industry is over 30 years. Right. So we're okay. bringing it all yeah, to the table. Around, so that's cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So like I said before, we have uh, one of our cat members representing us, you know, going to some of these conventions over here. Uh, Zen, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. So uh, as you guys saw in that last clip right there, uh, you know, I drove my way onto the Florida TCG convention, had a nice little road trip there, um, you know, and uh, interviewed DSG grading for, uh, you know, the first time. So that was pretty cool seeing another grading company, a new grading company come up and uh, they were set up in one of the rooms with uh, just those MetaZoo art. That was pretty much like all that they were showing off there was a uh, MetaZoo set, which was, uh, you know, all of the hollows graded from the Kickstarter, uh, first edition Kickstarter. And, uh, and that was pretty cool to see that, you know, like they they, they went through, I guess, a lot to get all that and and you know get it graded and, and everything like that so that was pretty interesting um but what does uh the dsg stand for i'm not really sure it's a uh, diamond service grading it's a, a new grading company that started okay out. okay cool so yeah. how new are they though because it obviously they've already got slabs to show off so i mean is this like their first year of doing it or yeah, so uh, I believe I believe in the in the clip that uh, we showed, uh, he mentioned that they they were uh, some months uh, into the grading. So so they're just um, a little bit further ahead than uh, AGS. AGS. AGS yeah. yeah, they automated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds like a bunch yeah. of people are just trying to start up with their grading services. There are. I mean, there's a ton of it, other grading yeah. services out there. Basically, people were like, you know, I'm tired of waiting for PSA and BGS. So yeah, but you know what? <laughs> well, the rise in popularity of the TCGs and then those people, those companies getting backed up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's the yeah. perfect time for people to start doing it. I suppose. The perfect story. Yeah, it's I the mean, new definitely. YouTube. Yeah, you've got a whole bunch of you know smaller companies that are able to start up and do well. <laughs> and there's there's Sudan's racetrack. Again, yeah. so we replaced Allie's cough yeah. with Sudon's racetrack. Uh, Sudon, do they? <laughs> That's I mean, hilarious. Do you do you seriously live next to a racetrack? You know what you need to do, Sudon? It's you how good get the mics those, are. Like hot and ready. Like um, we're using it? these professional uh, mics these days. Krispy you know? Kreme. You need to get one of those signs up and just like drive slow or I'm recording. <laughs> <laughs> no, <right? laughs> Baby, oh, oh my god. god. All well, right. You know what's so, interesting is. Didn't I? I thought I heard MetaZoo did like a special thing with I think DSG too to help get cards graded. So that sounds like that might be a big push for them. Yeah, they, they look like they're working together, and they're um, it it certainly is. Um, and I think it's it's something that is going to help MetaZoo because, as you guys know, PSA. When we were talking about everybody else is backed up, so you got PSA backed up, Beckett, you know, uh, CGC, they're all backed up. And MetaZoo being a brand new TCG coming into the game, being able to pair up with a grading company and provide the service to get their cards graded 
faster than anybody else is is pretty useful, I think. So no, I agree. I, I, I think so too. They did. I'm good curious too. to see. I'm curious to see how uh, how far or how big uh, DSG can get uh, mm -hmm. based on the fact that you know all the other companies are backed up, but also the fact that they're so transparent about the grades. You know, we just heard uh, them talking about Alex from from DSG talking about the transparency being one of the most crucial things for them. They want to make sure oh, yeah. that the customer yeah. knows that the grade that they got and why that card got the grade. Well, and awesome. Which is, that needs to start pushing. Yeah, I mean, are, are we going to start seeing that has push? to happen? Well, that's what a lot of company. these newer companies are doing to compete because they, they don't have the big names of PSA back in CGC, right? So, yeah. I mean, we heard it with our interview with uh, AGS as well. That was one of the things they said that they were trying to capitalize on because not too many people were doing it. And, you know, it, yeah, it's tell them easy. The truth. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's easy card. just to slap that QR code on there so you can scan it and be like, oh, here's a breakdown of everything and why. Because, yeah. I mean, we've talked multiple times at this point, you know, like getting your PSA card back and going, how did this get a seven? And there's no explanation for it whatsoever. So you know, I think that's a that's a big step in the right direction for these you companies. But I think you're going to see a lot more companies really start to push that out, too. Yeah. But are I, you, I wouldn't. Are, are you going to see it though? The, I think I. I mean, we I kind of already are. I think you are. I think you're going to see it with the smaller companies that are trying to make a name for themselves. Yeah. And I, I, don't know I would is. imagine. I would imagine when PSA and Beckett uh, and CGC start getting a little worried that they're losing market share to these smaller companies because of that uh, transparency, they may end up starting to do it as well. Because let's be honest, you can scan a PSA card. You can scan a Becky card and you can scan a CGC card. They all have some sort of QR code on them. Yeah, so why do. can't they already provide us the information that these smaller companies are doing? And I, I would, I would imagine that PSA is already has to have some sort of uh, record of each of those cards. So I don't know. If, I don't know if maybe they just never, they don't, they don't keep the record of the card. Um, it just doesn't well, make sense. They though. already have the the records you can see of like how many of that card is graded in that specific grade. So mm -hmm. it really shouldn't be board. that hard for them just to be like, oh, well, your corner's got a seven, your surface got an eight and a half, you know, whatever. But the, you're missing. The is. I, you're missing I think one that. component behind it. You're missing the key component behind that, though. That right. means that you're going to be held accountable. Right for what you're doing, and yeah. I think that's yes. what they're scared about. Well, what's Absolutely. The big, what's the big but, I mean, that's going to catch up to me eventually. Well, well the, big the big secret, story? the big secret is well, that they're, they're they're not doing it because they don't want to be held accountable for the grade that you get. Um, that's all they give you. That's all they give you yeah, when you scan that barcode in the back of PSA. That's yeah. like mm -hmm. versus like where I like that. Not only do I like the label, by the way, but. They they give you like oh this corner here this is where the defect is you know or where the thing you have little stuff here in this sector here why why can't we have that in PSA you know like, yeah well, I'm PSA, glad there's this many of this card out there and this is why or I'd like to know why you well, know I mean yeah. for a while they were the only only real company out there besides Beckett doing it too so there was yeah. no competition they had no incentive to yeah. do it because people were naturally just submitting everything to them in Beckett and they didn't really have any problems. Well, now they've, you know, they've got the problem where they're so backed up, they can't take any more cards in. And, you know, now you've got, you know, a hundred different smaller companies vying for that real capitalizing estate. On it. Yeah. yeah. Capitalizing. And, on and it, that's yeah. how they, honestly, that's how businesses like them will get overrun if they're not careful and keeping up with trends. Yeah, um, and I mean, well, most most of the time, you're going to see these companies um, shift somehow to meet the demand mm -hmm. and to adapt. But you're always going to have some companies that just don't do it. But look I mean, at the if you look at took, right, the choice PSA took. I mean, and they've got people on board with that choice, upping the pricing of grading, um, only only uh, still getting services to. The people who want to drop three hundred dollars on their cards or two hundred dollars, you know, yeah. uh, it's it. I don't know. Well, they I, they I, did I, they they did the um yeah. the price increase for a reason, and 
that reason was because everybody and and their mother was submitting cards. And so what they ended up doing was they stopped the submissions for those lower tiers and uh, and just stuck with the higher tier ones. Because they did do a price hike, though. They did a price hike on those they, higher They tiers. did a price hike, yeah, because they were trying to deter people from sending in cards, but that didn't seem to work. So then they just cut off, you know, uh, the the whole the whole service. So that was their attempt to kind of mitigate the situation where they've got cards for a year or more sitting there, um, and then it didn't work out the the way they planned. I, I don't I think, see with that I don't see hike. PSA learning a lesson personally. I think sometimes these companies in that in the position that they're in when they're they've been in a monopoly for so long, they become very tone deaf, very much like Pokemon Go, and <laughs> they feel like they know what's best. Yeah, you know, we've been. I know I've been saying since we got back into this uh, into card collecting, especially with the graded cards, it just stinks that you don't, you know, you don't get to know what is wrong with the card. You just you're just left there going, well, what's wrong with it? We've all seen countless nines and tens that just yeah. scratch your head. You're like. How did that get a 10 again? It's just, yeah. it can be mind blowing. And then, you know, over the years, we've seen TCA gaming, Rusty, you know, talk about this particular issue. And he's like, I don't care. It's a, got a 10 on it. That's all that matters. And I think that also doesn't help the hobby either because, you know, it's not a true 10. If you were to send that in yeah. to be regraded, it definitely would get marked down. Yeah. But, and that's, that's, that's right. one of the reasons, Harley, that I always mention and, and I say it like all the time, every time we talk about the subject is you don't buy the grade, you buy the card. And that's what we were talking about. You know, Grumpy was asking about some cards earlier um, in conversation. And I said, you know, you need to make sure that you're checking out the actual card. If there's only a picture of the front of the card, then go to, you know, contact the seller and say, hey, can you send me pictures of the back? Can you send me close-ups of the hollow? Can you send me this? Can you send me that? There's no, there's no reason why a seller shouldn't put all of that stuff up on eBay already, unless there's an actual issue with the card, or they're just being lazy, which a lot of times that is the case. I mean, it takes time to put up all these cards and all that stuff, so I understand it. But they're just banking on the regular person, the regular collector that's going to be like, oh, it's a PSA 10. So I'm going to buy it because I know it's a PSA, you know, it's, it's graded. So it's got to be good. And then they receive it and it doesn't look maybe like a PSA 10, right? Um, I've got a PSA 8 unlimited Charizard, base set unlimited Charizard that I still do not know why it's an 8. I could probably crack that and send it right back to PSA and I would probably get a higher grade on that. Card. But I mean, I'm not going to do that because I'm not really interested in, 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 you know, getting into, uh, a case like that but um there's just there's so many cards out there that just do not look like the grade that was given to and them. they've even come up with the term they'll call it yeah this is a week 10 yeah well, <laughs> what's the difference it has a 10 right. on it right so at right. the end of the day you shouldn't be a week 10 it should just be a 10 period but they Who know that it it's said a that ten? a 10 shouldn't even exist a 10's like perfect they they should be given out rarer they're most of the time. Like I, <laughs> I think it. I think a ten a ten should be extremely hard to get, and I think yeah. that that's what um, that's what Beckett has done with the black label, right? They've made it extremely hard to get the black it's label. But like of course, what, uh, CGC did too. Well, CGC just straight up they don't give ten. I mean, like <laughs> you have to you have to you have to have perfection in order for, to get a ten from them, which is good. Mm -hmm. because it sets the precedent of we're not going to give you a 10 just because it looks like it's close to a 10. It's got to be a real 10. It's and what the I fact that we give past. a 10 on something actually holds value versus so what, like yeah. some companies might not might give the same score as PSA and it's not going to hold the same value, which is, right. uh, that's the problem also, I think, is if PSA keeps holding the values that they do, even, you know, Beckett, you know, that's going to make it harder for these grading companies and for, make it easier for PSA to stay in the same hole that they're in and not make any changes because well, their value the, holds. The tough part about that is that you have 
and I, and we're just talking Pokemon here, but I mean, obviously this isn't sports because I'm not into sports, but I can I can tell you from Pokemon collectors, if you look at some of the big name collectors, they always say PSA is the way to go because of value. And you're going to get the best value out of a PSA. Um, and it's true. The problem is that that mentality is where the problem is. That mentality of I'm going to send a PSA because they are the, they are the authority on cards, you know they are the authority on Pokemon. Um, it's not going to change unless the community, the Pokemon community, decides we're fed up with PSA. Let's give these other grading companies a chance and value them just as much, you know, as a PSA. Well, the two issues with that is that you have these. You have collectors out there with these enormous collections. I was just reading, um, as I think many people know, a whole incident came out earlier this week regarding uh, PWCC in the auctions mm -hmm. with eBay. <laughs> and somebody had said that they had $100,000 worth of graded cards in the PWCC vault. And they didn't know if, how they were going to get them back and all this other stuff. But basically, that those people that have that large of a collection, which, you know, it's pretty much probably going to be at least 80 to 80 percent to 90 percent. It's going to be PSA, probably 10 to 20 percent is going to be Beckett. You know, they're not they don't want a CGC or an AGS or a DSG because that's kind of going to take a it's going to take a little bit of value out of their their collections because. Again, you're going to start getting real competition, which is what America is all about. America is about competition. And we haven't had that in the graded market. Like you said, uh, what you just said a few moments ago, ago regarding, you know, PSA 10 or PSA 9, uh, or I should say a, a Beckett 9 or 9.5 in many regards is kind of considered a PSA 10. You know, a PSA 10 is sometimes not regarded if it was to be graded by Beckett as a 10. It, 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 some people would say, well, that would only be a 9.5 at Beckett. So it just, it's so crazy that people are, are associating these prices and values when none of it is perfect. It's not yeah. even close to being perfect. So, well, and, and but, then the same, that same argument, like you said, it's that same argument is, well, it's, it wouldn't be a 10 in a different company. Well, then why are we valuing this 10 as a 10 when it really shouldn't be? Uh, you know what I mean? So, and you're talking hundreds to thousands of dollars difference here with these right. these minute, 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 minute differences. And this is where I, we really loved and 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 I think we embraced AGS and what their message was because you know we at the end of the day, you know we we want transparency and we want a a consistent level of grading, not this inconsistency. Because like you said, some people are getting $10,000 for an, an Evolutions 10 Charizard. It's um, essentially pay to win for card collecting. Pretty much, yeah. And it's yeah. It, that shouldn't be a case. That should stay in yep. EA games and only in EA games, and that's about it. <laughs> we, it's 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 kind of bold. It's like We need like more bold individuals like the one they said in your that video there. You know, he wanted to make sure he got all of MetaZoo graded. And made sure he had that set completed, and I'm like, that's that's a bold move because you have to go. Bold well, this, you know, it's like <laughs> it's it's you. Do you want to put your investment behind this company that may or may not have any value? And you heard them say you can't crack these open without destroying the card, mm -hmm. which should be the case in any graded situation. If you're going to break that thing open, you deserve to destroy that card inside. You should get what you get, and no one get a fit. You know. Well, uh, that would be that would be accurate if the grading was accurate. It, right. But the grading, yeah, that, the grading is not accurate, and so what ends up happening is you get back your card, and it comes back as a six or a seven, and you're like, "This card is absolutely perfect. Why would I we not all, send this back?" We were all just talking about this. Wasn't there a post on Instagram? We saw someone crack open a card on Instagram mm -hmm. recently. Because it made no sense to have it in that value, that grade that it got, it was worth more money without that grade. And so they cracked it open to try and sell it raw, you know, 
And they're not going to turn that code in to PSA to let PSA know that they did that. So yeah. plus you're you falsifying the population. That. You're falsifying the population report. It's it's like insider, not insider trading. I forget what the, the exact term would be on Wall Street for that. But you're definitely you're falsifying so that you can uh you know profit from that. And that should be an issue. That, these are all problems that really should have been taken care of years ago by PSA. It, it, to me, there's such a huge lack in PSA's responsibility in grading. When, when you decide to become a grader, when they became a grading company, they should have definitely been way better than what they are now. The fact that we're in 2021 and they're still way behind and yet have all these new companies come up and start pushing what should have been done. Like I said, why are we paying these companies like CGC and Beckett for our to have our grades on the card. We're already paying you to do that job. We're paying you to grade the card, grade it. No, we, we want to, we want to make a little extra more money by, by making you put corner on there and put, you know, surface and that that's what we're already paying you to do. Yeah. Well, Everyone's, that's kind of why I think companies like DSG are, is going to be, they're going to become popular, whether they are not now or not, they're going to be, because it's going to be, that that's essentially what everybody wants in their car is they want that, like they said, that trans um, transparency. They want the grade. They want the subgrades. They want to know how it got graded the way it did. And them just showing that breakdown of, you know, like, okay, here's the front of your card is broken into four quadrants. And then you got the specific values for each quadrant. I mean, that's, that's what people want. So it's it's yeah. clear that they're taking these ideas in. They're taking what PSA isn't taking and actually building on that idea. So we just need Niantic to do it now and we'll be good. That's because <laughs> these are all people who had the bad experiences with PSA. That's why they're yeah, doing yeah. it. They'll all tell you that. Yeah, we used to send all our cards in. We always hated that. Now this opportunity came up to you know go up and compete against them and and – you know, great. I'm glad it's happening. And uh, yeah. unfortunately, we're probably not going to see the majority can, you know, make it. But hopefully it will change the game a bit and uh, some will hopefully be successful. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully the, the ones that are trying to change the game and trying to do something different and trying to improve the current system. I do hope that they make it um, because they're the ones that are really going to make the difference compared to some of these other grading companies that have started up and all they're doing is just making a fancy pretty little label and then calling it, you know, the same exact thing as everybody else is doing. Right. So, I mean, and there's a ton of those already. I mean, I've got, I, I can't even count how many I've seen on Instagram. Uh, I mean, you've got, you guys have seen, there's a new one in the UK. Ace grading, I think is one of them. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's just so many of them. There's, we've, we've talked about all of them, but the there's one, so many. That one PokeTuber started his own too. I forget his name. That yeah, that would be, be that. Uh, I think Randolph. that's Ace, Ace Grading. Yeah, that's yeah, Ace Randolph. Grading. Randolph or right. Rudolph or something. Yeah, yeah that's, that's Ace Grading. So, I mean, you know, there's just so many of them. And um, I'd like to see the ones that really want to change things um, kind of make it. Now, what was I do have some good luck. I've, I've got some good news, and uh, coming from that interview that I did with Alex uh, from DSG, he he did mention to me afterwards that he would love to come on the podcast and mm. uh, and have DSG represent and uh, do a an actual podcast interview with them, uh, kind of like what we did with AGS. So that could be something we could do here uh, on the podcast soon. And if uh, if everybody's into that. Um, if you, you know, if you're watching this video, uh, comment down below and let us know what you want to know about grading and or any company that's starting up uh, that kind of stuff. What you would want it, us to ask, because last time we had, a, you know, the conversation with AGS was pretty good. We asked some good questions, um, but we would definitely want to hear from you guys as well, because you mm -hmm. guys are the ones viewing this, you know, our videos and our podcast and listening on Spotify. So if you let us know then we can, you know, get some of yep. those questions into these grading companies and really get oh, man, the man, answers man. that you guys want. So make sure you hit the comments and uh, and let us know. Yeah, because you guys might have some different perspectives that we may never even think of when it comes to card grading. Exactly. And, you know, yeah. every little bit helps. So, yeah, anything you guys can think of, just submit 
in the YouTube uh, video. And we'll see if we can get it. Definitely. I mean, just today, I actually down. had a, a, a buddy from one of, another content creator, um, Killer Blade Plays, message me on Instagram, and uh, he knew I was coming down to the convention, and he said, "Hey, I, I heard that oh. you know DSG going up up to the convention, right? True, <laughs> and uh, and and he heard that DSG was going to be at the convention, so he started asking me, you know, could you get a chance to interview him and stuff like that? So." I mean, right out of the gate already, there's interest, you know, there's already that interest from people trying to find out about these new grading companies and, and what they're all about. So I think that's pretty cool. Well, enough with this grading stuff, man. I feel like we're, we've been talking about so much <laughs> lately. What else happened at the convention? What else was going on there? What did you find out, man? What's the Well, there was, well there, was a lot of, there was a lot of stuff going on. It was pretty cool. Um, got to, to uh, meet uh, – Yizzy and uh, Polish Rob there. Um, oh, that's right. Content, they were there, yeah. They're buddies of ours, content creators. Uh, we've we've all talked to them, collabed with them at some point or another. Um, really cool guys, and they were there. They were actually they had a table, which was uh, you know pretty interesting to see them there with a table. They were buying Pokemon cards. That's what they were there for. They weren't there to sell. They were there to buy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's just it was pretty cool to see like the route that they took to buy cards. Where like normally you would just walk around and go buy whatever cards you wanted from the tables that were there, they actually had a table where they were sitting there buying cards from the people going to the convention that were taking their cards in to sell. So that was pretty interesting to see that. It's kind of uh, smart though, if you think about yeah. it. Yeah, there's and, probably and, a lot of people there going, "I need the extra funds to pay for these overpriced cards." <laughs> Here we go. These guys. Well, are that's give me money. You know, and that's the thing is that like I took, um, I actually took some some uh, vintage Japanese packs, some Neo Discovery packs, and I sold them to Polish Rob because you know I was like, "Hey, I can make some money off of these and use that money to buy something else that I want here at the convention." Um, he gave me a, a fair price for it. Uh, I, I feel like it was it was a good deal, and I sold them the packs, you know. So that's kind of the kind of stuff that um, that they were doing, which is pretty cool. Not only that, they were just they were sitting there very comfortably while the rest of us were walking around sweating. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought that smart. was smart. That was real smart. Big props for that. I loved it. I like uh, sitting. That sitting is great. I, you know, I wish there was more sitting there. I, I I couldn't find anywhere to sit. I would end up actually going out of the convention and finding a bench nearby just to sit down for a little while and kind of rest. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was. It, it did not look like there was AC in there because you were sweating up a storm. <laughs> you can see in the video. There sure. was. It wasn't. It wasn't even that hot in there. It was just you know with the mask on and walking around and then recording and lot having people. like you know there's people i mean it wasn't as it wasn't as hot as it looked from the crazy amount of sweat that was coming down my face but um that's just you know that happens to us uh heavyweights with uh <laughs> when we wear masks so i mean that's just the way it is was there any like really cool stuff that you that that you were able to pick up or there was a ton of cool stuff actually the first day was pretty interesting um like half the table, I wouldn't say a little bit, a little bit less than half the tables were uh, empty. So not all the vendors had shown up yet. By the time um, I had left, there were still some tables that were still empty. Um, but uh, on day two, they actually did pretty much fill up most of the tables, which is pretty cool. Um, some really, really interesting stuff. And we have, I have footage uh, which we can share with uh, basically. Uh, rugs, you know, there was a really cool uh, store, um, and I actually met the the owner. He sat next to me when I was trying to rest outside, and he sat next to me. And we started talking, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm the guy that made the makes the rugs." And I'm like, "Oh, cool! Those things are awesome." And they're like the really they're the coolest handmade rugs, just giant Pokemon, and they look really good, high quality stuff. And I was like, "This is this is really awesome." You know, I mean, that's not something you normally see every day, you know, and it's not like the cheap rugs that you would get on, like, on the internet or something like that. But that was pretty cool. I thought that was a, an interesting uh, table. Those are, like, cool little pieces, too, that y you don't really find anywhere either. So 
finding stuff like that would be pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the other thing is, and uh, we pr probably should show it here, um, probably roll to that, which is the interview I did with Jason Page, which mm -hmm. is the singer of the original theme song for Pokemon. He's also yeah. done a couple of other songs as well. Nice. Um, he was really, really cool. I, you know, a lot of times you, you kind of go to these things and you're like, oh, they're, they're a big time singer or a big time, you know, actor or whatever the case is. And you kind of expect to be like just some dude that comes up to him and be like, hey, can you sign my, <laughs> you know, can you sign my card? And we're like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. But he was so cool. He like just right out of the gate, I was like, hey, how's it going? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm Zen. I have a YouTube channel and a podcast. I'd love to get an interview with you if you're, you know, if you're cool with that. And he was just like really into it right away. He was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's go, man. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. <laughs> he's so, really embraced it. Yeah. He's really embraced nice. it. He, he really has. He has a, he has a great personality. He's very energetic. And I, I mean, like he's perfect. <laughs> he's perfect for like doing the cons and stuff like that. I think because he's like, he's in that role and it's, it was pretty awesome. So I, I do we want to show that real quick and then we'll get back to talking yeah. about it. Yeah, I'm excited it. to see it. So yeah, I think the viewers are too. So uh, All right. let's go ahead. Let's roll it. All right, Legion, Legion of Zen. I got Jason Page here. He is the original singer of the Pokemon theme that's song. Right. And a whole that's, bunch of other things. That's him. Well. All those other things as well. Pretty awesome. Jason, how's it going? It's going excellent, sir. It's going awesome. excellent. How's it going with you, Zen? It's, it's going great. Uh, we are well, I, I got one. I got my channel, my YouTube channel, and the Cardboard Addicts podcast. Oh, I'm yeah. going to be uploading this to the Cardboard Addicts podcast, most right. likely. But, um, I'm addicted to cardboard, too. Awesome. We love cardboard. Uh, so what do you have going on here? What I've got the, you know, the, 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 most, the most popular items that I sell in my web shop, and the Jason Page trainer card, the gold card that I'm signing right here, and I've got the Jason Page silver metal 25th anniversary autograph engraved that is pretty awesome with a 200 limited edition right there wow um and they're already secondary markets are already taking over and charging way more than i'm charging right here <laughs> it's amazing these markets and who made those for you uh zeba tv zeba yeah you know zeba? Oh, absolutely yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah and so, the rest of it is just stuff that I that I sell in my web shop. Yeah, that's the most popular things. The OG guys, right? You know, and uh, uh, Charmander and these guys—they're really good. Very, very nice. Um, and I'm also signing other people's items: shirts, uh, hats. Funko Pops are going crazy right Everything, now. Everything, huh? I'm signing butts, arms, <laughs> chests, foreheads, whatever one, whatever anybody wants signed. I'm that's, gonna sign it. That's pretty awesome. And how much are you charging for the signature? Uh, my autographs are thirty dollars. Thirty? Fifty dollars online, but the discount for the people here just to be nice about it. Gotcha, gotcha. But I don't want to devalue my autographs. This is a really interesting thing because how many autographs can you sign before it starts going down? Absolutely. We don't know what that number is, but we know that there's over a billion Pokemon cards that have been uh, you know, distributed. Right. So if Jason Page has signed only a, a couple thousand of them, it's just a small percentage of the amount of cards that are out there. So the autograph is not devalued. Yeah, right. absolutely. And Jason, uh, so I'm curious. You did the first original theme song. That's right. You, have you done anything else for Pokemon or just that song? Well, officially, no, nothing for. Oh, officially, I'm on the road to the Red City. Meet my friends along the way. That was the other song on the To Be a Master record. It was also in some Pokemon episodes. But besides that, nothing until 2016 when Pokemon Go came out. And I realized, oh my God, this is a whole ecosystem of a jungle of, of, of opportunity. Not with Pokemon, but with everybody else like yourself and other people that are creating content and creating costumes and cosplay and, and, and Comic Cons and YouTube channels and remixes and collaborations and then I started doing Pokemon content and I did the Pokemon Go tribute Catch the world with a throw Pokemon Go and uh, and I just recently or, or uh, not soon after, soon after that I did the Detective Pikachu unofficial theme 
uh, that merges with the Pokemon theme song perfectly and becomes a duet almost with the Pokemon theme song. Really cool. And uh, then I go around to Comic Cons and I unleash the power that's inside from everybody that has the song stored up in their DNA and their memories. Yes. Uh, but they don't know who I am until I'm introduced to them, like you're doing right now. So right. thank you for introducing me to your Zen community. Absolutely. Because uh, without this introduction, it might just only be in their heads and their imaginations it's, and never be unlocked. It's so cool to put a face to a name because everybody knows a name. They just gotta know who you are and see your face. Yes, as an adult, this is a cool thing. But as a child, yeah. the face actually disturbs matter. the imagination. Yes, so parents introducing their children to it, the children don't care. The parents will come up and say, you gotta meet him, you gotta meet him. And the kids are like, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever, whatever, whatever was that, I don't really care. <laughs> the parents now, because their their imaginations have, have, have held all the Pokemon joy that they've had for so long, finally unleash when they meet the person and uh, and it's one of my tasks to to catch them all to unleash the joy inside of each individual that doesn't know the face and that this is a real human being that can that can bring great joy to them Absolutely. Um, and uh, I'm doing that on my YouTube channel the, one of the most uh, important and, and, and satisfying things are the comments on the YouTube videos yes. more than any financial uh, consideration are, are the love and joy that people are writing in a public forum on the YouTube channel. So go check that, that, that main Pokemon video out and all my other YouTube videos as well. But just and, the comment section is great. And what is, what is the name of your uh, YouTube channel? Jason Page. This is Jason Page. Yeah, all right, okay, cool. Yeah. So go make sure you uh, check out Jason Page on YouTube. Absolutely. Hit him with the subscribe button, obviously. That's right. The like. You gotta, Leave a comment if you're feeling the love. Yeah, you got to do all those things, right? It's the whole YouTube thing, yeah. Absolutely. Jason, it has been an absolute pleasure meeting Dude, you. Thank you, Mr. I love it. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I'm actually going to get a card hopefully signed from you right now. Oh, so yeah. One we'll of your cards or one of mine? I think I'm going to get one of mine. I actually brought a Snorlax oh, yeah. base set, too. Oh, yeah. So I might... I'll get I don't even have that. I don't think I've ever signed a Snorlax base set, too. It might be the first one. There you go. All right. If you could, that would be awesome. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Signing a base set Snorlax too. Now it's very important that the cards that I signed haven't been signed before for the value to be a little more significant. At least the resale value. But I think in this case, this is just a collector situation. A lot of the people that actually get these cards, they never sell them. It's more of a sentimental thing. It allows them to to understand the power that's inside, to release that joy. I got them. Don't worry about it. It's a two hundred fifty thousand dollar Charizard just dropped on the ground. <laughs> Dropping cards. There it is. Now we're signing the actual card, not the case. Hello, yes, hello. Sir. How are you guys doing? You can sign the card, sir. All right, we're gonna sign them. Gotta sign them all. Snorlax. Uh oh, look out. Yeah, you want your name on there? Yeah, you can put on there Zen if you want. To Zen. There it is, there it is. You gotta let it dry. Make sure it doesn't go in there and get smeared. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you sir. sir. 20 years you're gonna be going around and, and doing this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Well, not this specifically. The more we do, the more we do. Signature from Jason Page. Well, I mean, like before Pokemon yeah. and all that. We're in the rocks. So that was the uh, interview with Jason Page. I thought it was pretty uh, cool of him. And uh, I did get a signed card from him, um, which was a base set Snorlax, a base set two Snorlax. Um, and that was uh, a non hollow. So I did you have him. You that on Instagram, didn't you? I I, uh, I believe I did. Um, I did. He gave you a little actually, sing song when he, when he gave it he, back to you. He did. He actually sang <laughs> yeah, a couple was times really there. Cool. <laughs> that was really cool. That was really uh, cool. He sang actually, a couple yeah. times uh, for us there. And that was, uh, that was pretty awesome. Um, mm -hmm. to, yeah, actually, to today, in. <laughs> today on day two, he was actually he doing, uh, he was actually singing for everybody. Uh, yeah, how did that go? Because you posted like a story from, I guess, the convention. 
and I watched, you know, basically him running around, like hyping everyone up. How did that like unfold? Yeah. So, so uh, basically just, he was scheduled to do that. Like, oh, okay. it was, it was, it was in part of the, the, the convention. He was going to be singing throughout the convention, certain songs that, you know, renditions of the songs that uh, he's done and stuff like that. So that's what, uh, that was uh, what that very, was all about. Very similar, I think, to the clips we <laughs> saw of him at, at Collecticon where he, yeah. he did it. I think that was the first time he had really done that though. It seemed like everybody really went crazy over it. So Click that is also really huge though too. A lot more people there. How Did was you the sing crowd? And dance along with it, Zen. I'm sorry. What was that? <laughs> Did you start singing and dancing along? <laughs> he, no, I'm not a, he was screaming at the top of his lungs. I'm not. I'm not, a, I'm not much of a singer. I mean, how was I, the other? How was the crowd like reacting? It was the because it's a smaller convention, obviously. So how how was that like? I mean, reacting? the crowd. Yeah, the crowd was reacting pretty good to it. I mean, everybody was really enjoying it. It was it was a fun time. It was good. Good. It was very interesting because it was like you know, I mean, you're you're focused on the cards and stuff like that, and suddenly you've got Jason singing, which is pretty cool. And, <laughs> yeah, just everybody kind of gets into that. So yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Harley, you meant you had mentioned something about the the crowd, the size of the crowd, or something like that, or how many people. Yeah, because were I there. knew obviously it was it's not it's not Collecticon, obviously it, it's they right. were in a huge hall, and this looked like it was in a, a much smaller uh, place, intimate. you know. Very, yeah, yeah, so, more intimate. Right. So um, I, for those that uh, don't know, Stewart, Florida is uh, it's not a huge city um, by any means. You know, I mean, it's it's decent sized city, but um, a pretty view there. They, it's, it's a heck of a view. Beautiful ocean view. They did have a gorgeous ocean right next to the place, which is pretty cool. Insert that ocean clip. <laughs> yeah, there's the ocean right here. Hey, pretty ocean. Uh, but uh, the the actual convention was in a uh, kind of in a hall that was three rooms. And uh, two of them were in the same building pretty much. And then the other one was in the building like right next to it, which was connected by a roof. Um, the main room was where Jason Page was. So you guys can kind of see from the videos that you know we shot there uh where gizzy and rob were and all that stuff that was the main room that was the bigger room uh and then next to it was a smaller room where the dsg was set up uh and a few other tables in there and then the opposite room to that which was you know you have to walk outside you cross uh that one was actually pretty full um it was it was I think that one actually had the most like compact amount of stuff going on, right? Like you had more sellers and, and buyers and, you know, smaller area. Um, so that was pretty interesting. They had some really cool stuff there. I thought I, I was actually expecting it to be a little bit bigger, but um, you know, I've never really been to a card convention before. This is my first one. Yeah. Uh, the I, last I, I convention. I didn't myself. Yeah, the, the last convention I did go to was more of a comic book convention. So, you know, just uh, it was a huge convention in Miami, Florida. So it was like comparatively much bigger than this. Um, was this just a in general TCG convention or was it yes. like designed for Pokemon? It was it. Look, I'll be honest with you. It was mostly all Pokemon. Um, the majority but there of were stuff other was, things there, though, right? Other TCGs there, present. There were other TCGs present, but it was like very scarce. Um, you had most of the sellers were selling graded PSA cards from Pokemon. Uh, there were some sellers that did have some Digimon. I bought some Digimon packs there. Um, some nice. Dragon Ball stuff yes. as well. Dragon Ball Super. Yeah, Digimon. so they did have, you know, I mean, Pokemon also, they had vintage Pokemon stuff from, like, Tops and mm -hmm. uh, all that other stuff that, you know, we collect from Pokemon, too. How so. was pricing? Was How was pricing? Because, you know, I'm always wary <laughs> when I, you know, these conventions, man. It's like going to a, you know, like Super Bowl, you know, you, it's a one-time event, you know, so they got to sell, like, the shirts for $100, you know. Yeah, on that so, cheap like two dollar beer is suddenly twenty dollars, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pricing, um, pricing was interesting. I think it really depended 
very much on the seller. Uh, there were some sellers that had some pretty expensive prices on things uh, that, you know, I was just like, okay, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to walk away from this uh, for sure. Uh, and then there's, you know, you had other sellers that were more in the price range of what eBay is selling, you know? So I, I use, I use eBay as kind of like my guide for buying, you know, for buying stuff there. You know, I look, okay, I want this card. Let me look at eBay and see what it's going for there. Uh, in some cases, like there was a vendor that was way off on the prices. Mm. I'm talking about, you know, a hundred dollars on a PSA 10 more than what was on eBay. And I was like, yeah, no, no, that's not happening. Not quite um, new, but, new levels of insanity, but, but yeah, but, but you know, you, you're always going to have that. It, a convention is not like if you go to a store where, you know, things are a set price, you know, uh, you got a convention with so many different sellers and vendors and each one's going to set their own price for whatever it is that they're trying to sell. You know, well, and they're, they're trying to uh, day one and day two. Uh, well, I'm sorry. What was that? Did you notice any difference? Because most cons, if you go like on the last day, they're going to try to get rid of as much as they possibly can because they don't want to carry it back. I makes that makes sense. But so they usually will drop their prices and give better deals. Did you notice that there was any of that happening? This is only a two so, day event. So it was a two day event, um, and I didn't really stay till the end of the event on uh, day two. Um, so you know, I'm sure that the prices probably dropped some towards the end of the day when people were trying to offload some of the stuff more. Um, Still probably uh, ridiculous. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, look, I was able to buy some stuff there. Uh, actually, uh, shout out to, to Donnie, uh, South Florida Pokemon, uh, which uh, sold me a uh, Blastoise, Japanese Blastoise PSA 8. Um, but now I had bought that card from him on a live stream that he had done on Instagram. Uh, he had just received the cards back from PSA and I went into his live stream and I saw the card and I was like, I, I got to have that card. And so we made the deal on Instagram. He was going to ship it to me and I was going to send a PayPal. And he was like, Oh, aren't you coming to the convention? I said, yeah, I'm going. He said, Oh, okay, cool. So forget the PayPal. I'll, I'll sell you the card over there. So we had already come to agreement on price and stuff like that. It was a good price. It was a fair price. Um, and uh, and so we made the transaction there. It was pretty cool. Uh, I also was able to, like I said, I was able to buy some uh, Dragon Ball Super stuff, some Digimon packs, uh, just stuff like that. I made some deals outside of the convention, which was pretty interesting. You were uh, saying that a, it was pretty pretty um, busy outside. Well, you know, there was people that were kind of just in and out. And, uh, you know, you'd find, like I said, there was not really anywhere to sit inside the convention so you'd have people come out and it was i mean this place is literally right next to the water and so it's there's a park kind of like right next to it with you know benches and like those uh, uh i guess those party huts or whatever you want to call them and so people would just go out there and kind of hang out and talk and stuff like that so i was able to to start talking to a group of uh friends there that were just chatting next to me and uh they were just i overheard them saying hey you know I haven't, uh, I haven't been able to trade anything. You know, none of the sellers want to trade anything. And uh, uh -huh. so I was like, hey, so I'll, you went I'll... to the black market. So you're the sketchy <laughs> guy in the parking lot. <laughs> I was like, like hey, hey I'm cars. willing to shady deals. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm willing to trade over here. I got some stuffs. He um, went scalper on us. He did. But, uh, it was actually pretty, it was pretty interesting. It was pretty cool because I was able to meet some people and they were really cool. Um, I got some good prices on some PSA cards, uh, some CGC cards that I would not have gotten inside. You know what I mean? So it actually worked out pretty well. I was able to trade one of my cards and lower the overall cost of what I was buying using one of my PSA cards. Um, so that was pretty awesome. And then I also did another deal outside uh, with the same uh, guys. And basically he had brought a Dragon Ball Super collection. Uh, that uh, that he had bought. He was really. He's not really a Dragon Ball collector, but mm. um, he he just wanted to offload it. So we we came to an agreement. And again, I looked at eBay. Uh, he gave me a price. I looked at eBay, and I was like, uh, you know, sealed. It's kind of this price, and 
he dropped the price for me and we, we came to an agreement and it worked out pretty well you know so that kind of stuff is is pretty good you can definitely find some deals and it you you don't always have to look for them at the convention itself inside from the vendors you know so that, there's that brings a Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Zen. I, let me. I didn't mean to cut you off there, but that brings the question: How many of these people do you feel were local to Florida? Probably like the vendors and stuff, because I, I don't know how many people know where Stewart is, but Stewart is not exactly in a main city. It's it's yeah. outside of pretty much all the main cities, and I think it's what it's it's like north of Miami, right? It's like it's know, it's about two it is, it's but. it's about two and a half hours uh, north of Miami. Um, it's a nice little drive. It's a nice little drive, but it's it's Stewart is in, in a pretty decent place because you've got Miami under it. Uh, you have uh, on the other coast of the Florida, you've got you know Tampa, Orlando, all these places. Which I mean, you literally just have to cross Florida, uh, so you're looking at two to three hours. So okay. you have people from you know like Polish Rob is in in the uh, Orlando area, I believe. You know, and he's he was able to make it there in like two hours. So. You have people from those areas that are able to make it. Um, there was quite a few people from Florida. Actually, one of the guys that I was talking to that I, you know, did a deal with uh, is is from Miami. Um, and then you also had quite a few people from out of town as well. I was actually talking. There was uh, one of them was from Kentucky. Um, so we, you know, you had people oh, wow. that had flown in. Yeah, people had flown in for it. So I just wondered if that factors into the structure. Uh, the price of what's going on sometimes, you know, depending on how far some of these vendors travel to, you know, and they got to make up their, their travel fees and things like that. I was just curious on how that might hit home for, for a reason why some of the prices are, are exorbitantly high or maybe higher than normal. Um, why some can do that, negotiate, come on down, you know? Uh, yeah. That's why I was pretty much asking that. I think it all depends too on the um, the desire for them to sell. Uh, I think that you know sometimes you have these vendors that, are, that go there and they show off their collection, and they don't necessarily have a need to sell the cards. Um, they're just there to hang out, show off their con their collection. If somebody comes to give them the right price for a card that they have that's extremely rare, then they'll sell it. But it's not something that they're willing to drop a price on just to get rid of it because they need to, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that some of the vendors were there and you could tell which ones were trying to, you know, offload stuff and which ones were kind of just like hanging out and just wanted to yeah. show off their, you know, their base set, uh, you know, <laughs> shadowless Charizards and stuff like that. And you kind of just, you know. Who would you say was, who would you say is, maybe the most well-known person that's known in the Pokemon community or card collecting community that showed up. Was there anybody, I mean, not like Jason page, but I mean, a, like of the card collector, you know, usually like at Comic-Con, we saw pretty much every YouTuber in the world that was there. Was there anybody like that other than you <laughs> there, that was there? Uh, Pokey Jew was there. I think he's pretty well known throughout the community uh, oh, wow. for his vintage okay. stuff. He actually wasn't there selling anything. He was just hanging out. Uh, he had, I guess, some some friends that were vendors, and uh, he was actually uh, helping them sell stuff. So uh, he was just sitting there, kind of, you know, selling stuff for them when they walked away or whatever the case was. Um, I got to talk to him a little bit. Uh, I don't think I recorded any any of our conversations, but we were just kind of just talking, and uh, uh, he was pretty cool. Uh, another person I met was uh, Claire's Lair. Uh, she's got a Insta, you know, Instagram and. YouTube, I believe, and she was uh, she was there as well. Um, some of the vendors, I think uh, DFW Pokemon was one of the bigger vendors. Uh, Scott Emery, wow, yeah, uh, Scott. You know, so they, you know, they had some uh, some folks there that were pretty well known. Okay, so, looks yeah. like it was a fun time, nonetheless, very productive. It was. Yeah. It was. It was good. It For was those good. that don't know. Myself and I believe Ren, we were, and I think even Sudan, we were supposed to go and join Zen, but unfortunately, life stepped in the way and we were unable mm -hmm. to join him. But that was the yeah. plan: was to join Zen and Stewart. We were going to try and do a live broadcast, actually, 
of the podcast from there. But again, it just didn't work out this time. So who knows, man? We still got the future ahead. You never know. Yeah. So the, so and basically, the what ended up happening yeah. was what, what ended up happening was that they left the uh, the shy introvert all by himself <laughs> to go to go to the event. <laughs> you did a we good just, job, Zan. We you were did a good job. I did. I did. Some people need a push, and that's that was our push. I had We'd to, all I would have been, been that, I been that guy. Corner. I would have been that guy with the huge backpack on, with the huge tripod. I would have had my mono cam. I would have had the other one. And I'd just been recording everybody and talking to everybody. I would. Well, that would have been me the whole time. He's well, also the guy that would go in the middle of the convention and do that stupid handstand thing. That was a weird trend. Yeah. Well, I yeah, had this. I would have did the handstand. So, I did have my tripod, and you know, I had I had my stuff with me. Um, yeah, and like, I, you know, I, I, I was able to record quite a bit, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not one of those that just goes up to anybody and starts talking to them like Harley. So, uh, but it's, it was, it was definitely a, a push to have to do it sort of. Um, and I say have to, but it was, it was actually quite fun. So, well, Hey, um, we appreciate you going on our behalf. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank oh, you. You're welcome. Zen. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm glad. I, I look, hashtag, I, I hashtag am a in jealous, the comments. So. Thank you, Zen. <laughs> I, I really did want to go, and I had a no uh, giveaway, though. an obligation that came up, you know, that prevented me from going. But no, I, I, I really wanted to go because I've never been to like any kind of con either. So I thought that would be a really cool first one to do. You know, like represent Cap and have a good time. But I'm glad yeah. you did at least. It was really cool. One thing I did learn is uh, we're gonna need some business cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta start coming up with that. So one of the like, days, hey, you, have, you, have a, you, have a, you have a card? And I'm like, uh-huh. Hold on. Uh, why don't you just write here? With my Sharpie. <laughs> He's sitting there going, well, that would have been a great idea, but no. <laughs> one of these Very days, we'll have to find a place bus to meet up. And actually, actually, that would be to, uh, Very one Japanese of, of you. One of the one of the uh, we could probably show the clip here, but one of the sellers, one of the vendors, was doing uh, some of the string uh, art, which basically they made Pokemon out of string, um, and it was just like you know caricature of whatever Pokemon it was on a wooden back, and it was like the pins, and then the the strings would would kind of make the Pokemon. Uh, I forgot that. And it was that. I, know, yeah, yeah. I, I know I can't remember it. But it was so cool that I had to talk to them and uh, just kind of interview them real quick and kind of get some information off of them. So let's show that clip because they also uh, design, you know, business cards and stuff like that. So maybe <laughs> we might have to go for it. <laughs> we have to talk to them about that. But let's show that clip. Store? So much thread. It's on the front of the table. Yeah. And then our Instagram's here as well if you want to nice. catch that. That is really cool. Thank you. And this is what the finished product kind of looks like right there. Yeah, that's uh, nine hours worth of work right there. That's crazy. And the one in the front is 15 hours. 15 hours? Wow. <laughs> that's the name of the Name of our page if you want to give us a follow. Absolutely. It helps a lot. Any type of support helps a lot. Really cool. You guys got all kinds of stuff. Yeah. If you give me if you give me a uh, character, I'll do it for you. That view is gorgeous. Right? I love, love that. That's one of my favorites. I wish I had that one with me. I like the Snorlax too with the watermelon. That one's pretty awesome. And you can't go wrong with a Gengar. Can't go wrong with it. Love it. And what do you guys charge normally for these? So we start at 200 and then depending on detail, for, for instance, these are 200, the simple ones, and then like Charizard, more intricate stuff, but we mix it in. And then, so 250 for the Charizard, right? And then we also offer, like this is Jason Page right here. <laughs> we turned them into a Pokemon Trainer. Right. So you can also have that. I'll, I'll actually cartoon you for you and then I'll write it. So you get both. Very cool. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you guys. Thank you very much. Now, is this the same 
Uh, is this the same vendor that also I think you said did rugs or something like that or made? Uh... No, so separate vendor. Those are separate vendors. Uh, the oh, rugs okay. is a different one. Yeah. Was there anyone there that did um, that did pl personal play mats or anything like that? I didn't see any play mats. There was a company doing uh, like the three D printing of uh, like for PSA cards, but like you can put the your holders. slab holders. Holder. And, yeah, okay. yeah. I can do that now. I have a three D printer. Do you? Do I have you access have to one. Yeah. Printer? Are you lying? Oh, he has access to one. I have, my roommate got one. one. My oh, okay. got one. I'm sure he told us in our chat one time. Yeah, I'm like I. We've also. I just need the files and the the material. Okay. Yep. Our friend David Pokey Life, he has a 3D printer and uh, he can print up stuff for us as well. If we ever That's need. That's true. Very sad about that rug that got ruined by the squirrel Squirtle. It was a perfectly awesome Bulbasaur with a Pokeball, <laughs> and then Squirtle's on that. <laughs> ruined. I think Zen is about to jump through the screen at you, my man. <laughs> He likes Blastoise. He doesn't like Squirtle. I do like Squirtle. It's part of my Different. logo for. That's part of his logo. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like this. This is Zen's logo right here. This is Zen's logo. Yeah. He shows no love for War Turtle though. I you know I actually I like do. War Turtle, but for some reason I don't have very much War Turtle. By stuff. the way, these are here in my desk because. Up above where I keep them with the other plushies, the cats decided to climb into one of the cubby holes and knock all the plushies down all over my desk. So that's why these guys are sitting here. <laughs> no, well, you know, he's, he's just sitting there going like pew pew pew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he's playing Pokemon. Not show up, but yeah, he was aiming at me. Before. I need my Charizard. Battle, to battling me. with the plushies. <laughs> I sit here at my desk and just. Woo. But hey, otherwise, uh, don't it knock it, man. Like it's it fun. Pretty epic. Um, since you were able to go have a Christmas, basically a two day Christmas, um, did anybody else pick up anything? I mean, I haven't been able to pick up anything, unfortunately, but, um, everybody's always shown off their stuff. So was anybody else, uh, pick up something for the week or anything? I pick up for the week. Grumpy we're got bringing something. it back. Uh, I got more than I can even show, but <laughs> I've gotten a bunch of the new Dragon Ball super packs. Um, these are just I think some of Grumpy's the ones I about got. to go to Shopaholics here. So I got a bunch of those because they've been putting those in Walmarts. Uh, so check your Walmarts. Um, I've got like seven new Funkos. Um, golly, it's a there's a lot. I picked up the new Madden, um, you know, since Ooh. we also talk gaming. But uh, yeah, I, there's a lot. And uh, while we've been doing this podcast, I've been buying some Steelers rookie cards. So this is, <laughs> he's been blowing this is his what money. this is what he does during the podcast. Like <laughs> the rest of us are here focused on talking to each other on the podcast, and he's just buying stuff, which explains why you haven't said a word during this. I'm not gonna lie. Time. So in the <laughs> <laughs> this part of it, the quietest podcast Grumpy's ever had. We thought episode one and two. He, he went off the Taco yeah. Bell, so he's I gonna. Think, I think for me, it's it's one of those things I have like an obsessive like disorder whenever I start to think about something and I can't be like, I'll look that up in a, you know, in 30 minutes when we're done. So like the last 10 minutes, I've been looking on that collect store you showed us for the Digimon stuff. And I'm looking at all the Dragon Ball Super like packs I've never gotten that I want to get. So I'm trying to look up the card list. So but uh, yeah, um, yeah. I've, I'm, you know. The so how the Funko things have been working. I have a buddy um, who's closer to town, um, and we both are into Funkos. I pretty much got him into Funkos, and now he's at like eighty-five or ninety Funkos. So I'm sure his wife loves me. I'm like her favorite person, <laughs> and um, so he's constantly going to different places that sell it. You know, whether that's Target, Walmart, or like a couple local stores, and he's always like showing me photos and stuff. And uh, thanks to Sudon, uh, we now know about the app where you can scan your Funkos and check the pricing and stuff. So we're both constantly doing that and being like, oh, you know, well, they want it for $12, but it goes for 15 on there. So it's, it's an okay buy or not. And, but yeah, you've, I created a monster and Sudon created two monsters with the app. So Sudon should really get like some sort of rewards points for that through Funko. Hey, I, I should. Yes. <laughs> I should by you sending me that syndical above your head. 
No, I got that straight out of Japan. That's from the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX set. Can I, I, know can I, I ask you guys a question? Go ahead. Have you guys been able to find any packs at any type of dollar store? I'll be yes, honest, I, I don't did. look because every time I've tried to go, it's it's blown out. I found these the tins. I got all three of the tins. Well, that's and Dollar then, General. They have the packs, though. That's not really well, a dollar store. I did get the uh, the. Is that Team Siege, Charlie? Uh, no, this is Team Up. Inside. Oh, okay. Wow, Team Up would be a nice. See, line. the Dollar General I went to today, or no, I'm sorry, not Dollar General, the Family Dollar. They had those same blisters, but they were all Steam Siege, and they were five dollars. And I was like, dude. <laughs> They're over here scalping yeah, prices too Steam. now. Steam <laughs> family has, dollars has got the family Steam secrets. Steam has gone up though. Steam <laughs> yeah. Siege has gone up though. Look on eBay. It's, <laughs> it's be, legitimately up there now. There's so really absolutely there's, there's no, no reason. There's I wouldn't no pay five dollars for, for an actual pack of Steam Siege. Right. I would save my five dollars. Yeah, Hayden, I would have well, them with you. I did save for my five dollars and then turn around Hayden and sold them to with you. Harley for eight. I, w I actually thought it was kind of interesting because I actually went to the Family Dollar. I went to four gen uh, family uh, Dollar Generals. I went to two Dollar Trees, and Zen, there you was at a convention this weekend. I, I was, but after the convention, I went to find some Pokemon cards somewhere else. But it's usually um, Dollar Packs, though. Usually, yeah. I want, packs. That's the thing is they didn't have any Dollar Packs, so the Dollar Dollar General that I went to. Had no. sword. I, I, hold on. <laughs> I know. I'm waiting. <laughs> Man on. suit on manners. Yeah, Zen hasn't <laughs> talked enough this episode. This has been the Zen podcast. The, this the sword and shield. The sword and shield packs they had. They were the sleeve blisters, and they were three fifty, which yeah, is fine. I mean, the, that's not bad. I bought. I bought. I bought four of them. I left a few because mm -hmm. I didn't want to be. You know. Mm, yeah, he left. Well, that's what I found besides those tins too. And I, I picked up a couple of those. Interestingly enough, they had them behind the counter. So the oh, that's probably uh, smart. Yeah, the lady at the uh, the lady had to grab them for me and uh, and all that stuff. But yeah, I couldn't find any dollar packs, like actual dollar packs. You know what I mean? Speaking of trying to secure the packs, have you guys seen the photos people take where um, you know, like in certain stores, certain products like special shampoos and stuff, they have to put them in that plastic case, even though it's like a you know, like a, a Walmart or whatever. People have been taking photos of like the like blister packs, but the like so oh yeah size yeah. of the pack right. But the box in it is only this tall, and so yeah. they just mash it up in there, and it's all like bent to hell. Oh, uh, because that's what that's you do. CVS and Walmart's. Yeah, I'm just like oh well, man. If I they had the pictures that. of the dollar stores that were doing the um the keeper tags, but they and had putting them through the cards and <laughs> literally sticking it through idiots, the cards. Man, idiots. Yeah. Now, as I was great. trying to say about the dollar packs oh, and sorry, got, got trampled by he who must remain quiet this whole episode. Um, <laughs> Go ahead, Pseudonymousaurus Rex. Did you ask the managers at the Dollar Tree? From what I know, because I, yes. I live with somebody who's an assistant manager, they have them hidden if they do have them in the manager's office. Last I saw, they had them taped to the counter. A bat, like, hey, we have Pokemon cards, and it was a unified mind. <laughs> so they were all throwing all the stuffs that they were buying across this pack. And I'm like, oh, God, oh, God. That was the last I saw, and it was about a month or two ago. I haven't seen anything dumb. else. I, yeah, I will they, not buy them anymore unless they come in right. the sealed, the pre sealed thing now. And that's what I've been finding them like the in the cereal now. packs. That's what yeah. I was looking for. That's what yeah. Family Dollar used to do. They were the only ones for a long time doing that. Well, because they could also charge more so, than a dollar for stuff. So Dollar so Tree, these are I two. Dollars. They, they would charge you two dollars, so it would technically still be a dollar. Because there's pack. two packs in here, though. There's actually right. two in here. So you're 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 paying. You're still a dollar, but there's two packs now. But um, again, you're at least you're guaranteed that these haven't been searched, though, because mm -hmm. you can. I mean, it's really hard with this on here, so. That's what's great about these. Yeah, and I actually asked the dollar, uh, the manager of dollar stores, and uh, especially Dollar Trees, because I know that they they usually have it behind. But uh, one of the managers was like, "Well, we haven't had uh, a shipment of Pokemon in over a month, but the last time we did get one, 
um, somebody came in and asked for a box or they asked if we had Pokemon cards and I was like, yeah, sure. They're right over there. And then they went and they grabbed the whole box and bought the whole box. So he's Let me like, ask you a question. if you saw a box like that, would you do that? Like an unopened box? Yep. <laughs> if it was an <laughs> unopened no box, is. if it was an unopened box, yes, I would. Because, because you don't have to explain it. I, I mean, I wanna, this is I an explicit, <laughs> this, because this I is your time. Box. Hold on, Sudan, do your thing, man. It's it fine. He already did it. He spun around and oh, he did. Oh, I did. I was listening. I, I was. Uh, I was. It's done so. For cool. Spotify, and there's this channel it. called Epic Tube HT. He does channels. <laughs> so promote. There, I did it for, for you. our Spotify yeah. listeners. Sudan here Thank has you. like three Appreciate unopened it. boxes of various sets. Of uh, I have a full box of un unbroken bonds Dollar Tree packs that actually got pennied out. So each pack was sold for a penny. <laughs> so and they had never gotten out of the office, so nobody ever touched it. You know, so those you got got you up. just send it to us. Send it to me. I'm hoping to pull that 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 Matchamp and uh, Match Marshadow card. Mm, that's a good. One. It's, a, it's a good card, and that's it. And then as many Stunfisk as I can get. Didn't I send you one of those? Why do you want so much pieces of garbage? Yes, we, that was our first trade. Actually, yes, we traded the, the alternate art with with uh, and I got you that rainbow Blastoise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a first trade I've ever done, and that was that's long and f great friendship from there. That's right. that's right. Well, I have a pickup too that uh, I have to credit Harley for because he kind of he kind of got me to go pick it up. Um, I know Grumpy has one as well. Yeah, I forgot about those. For you guys who are not watching on the YouTube channel, I have the uh, what was it? Unagaba. U Unagaba. Pikachu. Now, are you so, sure you didn't just like take a sharpie and draw it yourself? Well, if I did, it was a when she saw it, she was like, "Who would did buy that? It looks like that? a five-year-old drew it." Show her the I, eBay page so, where they're selling them for thousands. I bought this for <laughs> like eighteen dollars, and then I noticed that when Grumpy said he was looking through and trying to find them, they were like. Twenty-five to thirty dollars, and I was like, "Wow, I must have just bought it at the right time." Oh, I didn't. And pay that I recently mine. went back to go look I at. I think the I paid seller. twenty-five. I went to go for look mine. back at the seller who was selling it because he had a lot more, and he had bumped his up to like twenty-five dollars too. So, did did you just come from Japan or in the U.S.? No, it came straight from Japan. Man, I'm still waiting on mine. They put yours in a bubble mailer. Oh yeah, like a really thick one too. <laughs> the it's got guy, the thick I'm not gonna lie. There. I so I'm thinking, you know, like this you guy has lie, thousands nice. of sales, like it's it's you know, there's nothing to be worried about. And it's like, oh, it got delivered. And I'm like, I look and it says it's in the you know mailbox, and I'm like, okay, it's probably in a small box or something, you know, it can fit in the mailbox, that's fine. I get out there and it's literally in an envelope, and I'm like, oh my god. And oh, so yeah. I'm just like walking back into the house, just like ready to be so upset and go on there and leave a nasty email and be like, I want my money back and all this. <laughs> and so that's all that I got from Leonhart when I haven't opened yet. <laughs> and so, yeah, like I open it and he, the one thing he did is he put two pieces of cardboard and sandwiched everything and like wrapped it real well. But yeah, I, still, I would not have shipped it like that, but you know. Yeah. Most of the stuff that yeah. you, if you get single cards oh. from Japan, you're usually going to get them in. Some sort of a bubble mail. Right. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Yours was in a box. That's the guy who shipped me one in a box that just flung around. <laughs> Look, they were in a box at least, okay? It don't matter. Out of curiosity, <laughs> out of curiosity, Harley, have you received the box I sent you? I have not. I have okay, not. You, should be, you should be getting it. I'm very Tomorrow. excited well, for a box. I received a box. Did you get behalf. your birthday gift? I, I did a, I, a year ago. I opened it and I sh <laughs> I showed you pictures of it, and I even made a po Instagram post about it. You did. Yes, I'm very aware. It just Why'd took you a ask? While, but that's okay. <laughs> I did receive something else. In the Point it too. out. Well, you did send it to my PO box. So God, no, Zen's so fancy with his PO box. Yeah. Zen's like, that's I had to have cool. my people go out and check it. Pretty much. Oh, yeah. one? Oh, no, yeah. this is this is the one that uh, Metazoo sent us, but. I don't know if I've actually I, I made a little short video on Thursday about it, but uh, we we do have a uh, opening we're gonna be doing of some MetaZoo product here pretty soon as well. MetaZoo. 
I'm I don't, pointing I don't at know. it to you, the one I have. <laughs> yeah, we, we all have uh, some product that MetaZoo is kind enough to send us, so happy about that. And we're, we're yep. going to crack yep. some open for you guys here have pretty we, soon. Have we decided on a date yet for that? No, let's keep it a secret. Okay. <laughs> Let's just spring up on them. Yeah, so All right, well, so so here's going for a live, right? Here, yes, we're gonna go for a live. What you gotta do, guys, is make sure that you're following us on Instagram and Twitter so that you know when we're going to be doing the live. Because we usually post like you know, if we're gonna be doing something um on those platforms. Yeah, we usually go about yeah. like two hours beforehand and start to let you know. <laughs> No, no, this we the live we, we did the other day. I got I did it at nine in the morning, so we had yeah. all day to get that out. <laughs> well, we will be doing it though, and we'll hopefully be giving you guys a little <laughs> bit more notice. So, time to prepare and plan for it. But uh, yeah, if you you guys are interested in MetaZoo, then definitely subscribe or you know like us, follow us on all of our uh, audio platforms as well. I, I guess it's really only going to be for YouTube though. You don't. I can really. Enjoy yeah, it's gonna it. be a live. It's gonna be a live for you. Well, we could do we could do uh, YouTube and Twitch because we do have a Twitch now. Yes, we have a Twitch. Yes, we do. We have a Twitch. We do. We have a Twitch. Apparently, yes. uh, it got created in the last podcast that we had. So <laughs> I think we're gonna try. For, I think Literally we're trying for Wednesday, right? We're gonna try for Wednesday. But we're trying for Wednesday. It all depends on on everybody's schedule, which is the toughest part mm -hmm. with. A five member podcast is getting everybody together. If we do Wednesday, do I have to make a video for Wednesday? Negative. Yes. No. Wednesday. No, if we is, whatever day, we, day whatever day we go live, we don't need to make a video that day. <laughs> oh man. He's like, Yes, I'm out of it. <laughs> It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Harley, did you get anything this week? Did you pick That's up a anything? negative. Because Why? I'm I'm poor as hell right now. <laughs> right. I mean, just oh, what did you get? In. You got AC, didn't you? AC was last week. <laughs> he got the best gift ever. Yeah, yeah. You you got got AC. I'm still waiting for AC. It's gonna now, be uh, now. I'm gonna be waiting for heat. Now I picked up. Uh, I could point at a couple things. There's the Cali Rex's boxes Jesus. here. I got the Barney box. I also picked up two of the Great Legend boxes. They're on their way. I got a bunch of meta zoo stuff because we got that sent to us. I got uh, what was it? what's that that giggle fits card? Oh, flesh and blood. I got some packs that sent to me from that. Uh, I got some magic packs sent to me. I'm I got a whole plethora of things that I'm just wow. not gonna ever show. Wow, I have a bunch Lovely. of stuff yeah. I need to take and send to you guys. Yes, Same. Yeah. I mean it would it would be awesome if you made some content with all that. Stuff that you got. As soon as I get oh, through God. this bulk, you'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm tired so of bulk. Never. Oh, bulk that's, is horrible. That's what I'm doing right now. Is uh, yes. don't <laughs> sleeve up everything <laughs> if you if you plan to do bulk. Sudon, does it's, this trigger you? The it's fact that you put it in your pocket. He just handed it to me, and I said, "You don't have anything to put it in," and I just toss it in my pocket. You have a wallet. <laughs> I thought about that, but why would you put in a wallet? You don't. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna don't say. You bend? Yeah. Why you don't you walk around with a front a top loader in your wallet? Who walks around with a top loader in their wallet? Yeah, yeah. Why do you have a top oh, loader in your wallet? Do you, How do you really? fit no, it in there? No, that's not true. <laughs> I was gonna not say. <laughs> that's not true. I mean, my wallet oh my is this God. big. It's a penny I mean, sleeve. It's a penny sleeve. Let's see, top Tell loader. It's, it's a penny sleeve. Let's see. It might, might could fit the wallet. You'd probably break it. it. Yeah, it'd probably be you know stretching mm. some of the corners out over there. But putting it, putting a card in your pocket isn't that how shiny Edith lost her Blastoise? I don't know. She did that when yeah, she was so like many years seven. ago. <laughs> so many years ago, her her base her you base know, said see, Blastoise. That's the difference, though. I have I have male pockets, so well, they're dark very deep, Whereas yeah. I think it was dark Blastoise because you well, yeah, used to get them, lost in those then. Oh yeah, you can get lost in my pocket, but it's not going to fall out. Whereas like female pockets are tiny and sometimes fake. So she might have thought she had a pocket and didn't realize and went to put her card in and it just whew, right under the floor. <laughs> and then some other little eight-year-old was just like, oh my god, mom, it's a dark blastoise. I hate this. It sucks. And stomped it into the ground. Let me ask you this. Don't, don't you guys hate it when you have like a hole in your pocket and you forget that those shorts 
have a hole in the pocket, and then you put your phone in, and then it just slides right out of your. This your is probably short TMI, leg. but only there's <laughs> only one place where I get holes in my shorts, and it's not in my pockets. And it's, a, <laughs> it's a problem with thunder thighs, so Jeez. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> That's the only problem. <laughs> Uh, well, I uh, I know that know. feeling. I know that feeling. The, the, sucks, more you know the worst grumpy. part is back when we you know went to work and like you'd have these nice pair of khakis that fit just right or jeans, and next thing you know, like you look down and there's a hole, and you're just like, well, I can't wear these anymore, or I need to go home now. <laughs> well, usually the hole starts small; it doesn't just all of a sudden just be like crater. <laughs> like, Dude, I, <laughs> let me tell you something. I have had some craters. See, I used oh to work at God. Food Lion, and from like having to squat down to put stuff on the lower shelf, I've had complete like, like blowouts down the back, and I'm just like, what am I supposed to do? And they're just like, keep working, and I'm like, I mean, I'm okay with this. Are you actually okay with this? <laughs> like, <laughs> our customer is going to complain, and we're going to get like some sort of lawsuit because you're going to take the fall, not me. I actually, I actually had a, a one time I got into an SUV. Went out to lunch with some uh, co-workers, got into the SUV, and it was one of those like where you had to stretch a leg to get real That's high and the whole thing. And and there was like, I mean, it was it was gone. I mean, my pants disintegrated, dude. And it was just like <laughs> <laughs> those things disintegrated. And literally I can just imagine was like, the feeling. I was just like, um, all right, guys, I need to go home now. And they're like, what happened? I'm like, you guys didn't hear the explosion. <laughs> that had just occurred. And they're like, yeah, we, were, I, you know, wasn't sure what that was. I'm like, yeah, those are my pants, is what that was. So I ended up going home right after lunch. Thanks to. I'm, like, I'm glad you still went to lunch, though. I would have at least sucked it up for that. No, no, we were, we were, we were already headed back to the. Office. Oh, that's sad. I was getting it. Yeah. <laughs> He's just in the, in the restaurant, sad. all like, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm you're going to be sitting, this. you know, like probably with your legs up under the table. It's not like you sit all well, cocked half the, back. And... Half the half the people out there nowadays are come, you know, sagging anyways. So what's the difference? <laughs> <laughs> it's become acceptable, apparently. So it is. It is acceptable. Well, Why one not, was intended, uh... one wasn't. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't get I'm alive though. Well, I have Why? no idea how we we. Got to that point. A grumpy <laughs> conversation. I don't either. <laughs> That's so wacky. You know what yeah. didn't happen to me during the uh, convention? You didn't rip your pants. That's right. So <laughs> nice. on on you that. You probably wore shorts heat, though. This sounds I like a sponge wear, problem. Of course, I wore shorts. Let me ask you a question. Um, then. Do you wear jean shorts? No. Good. Good. I, I was don't have to make. I don't like. Me. I don't like jeans. I don't like jeans at all, and I don't like the material. It's not very comfortable. If you get some comfy jeans, jeans in they're fine. But I only wear I only wear like basketball shorts. I love basketball shorts. Or 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 uh, Marriott. the ones with all the pockets. What are they called? Cargo shorts. Cargo Cargos. shorts. Yeah, I wear okay. cargo shorts. Cargo. Those are my type of shorts too. Well, because I, I well, you no, know no Zen they're... or uh, Ren over here is going to be wearing some jean shorts with some high top uh, white socks and some. All white New Balances because he got a fancy new lawnmower. <laughs> Look, that lawnmower is <laughs> super good, super good. I was so impressed with it. Sudan kept making fun of me because it was, uh, you know, I'm like embracing the full on dad roll mower thing. Life. Yeah, but uh, that no, that lawnmower is, is it impressive. a zero turn or is it just no? A it's it's tractor? just an it's an electric lawnmower, so he can't pop wheelies like me. Oh, that no, no, no. Fine. Well, I don't. I don't have a yard big enough to to justify a zero turn or anything right on. So, I want. Oh, okay. I would love to have one, but I can't justify it. I mean, sure I you mean, can. Fifteen Here's minutes into mowing my lawn, lawn, I'd be done. That's well, awesome. I'll, I'll tell you how <laughs> so to much justify time it. Saved. Where you live at is a snow area, and there'd be nothing more fun than putting a plow on the front of your yep. tractor. It's got a point. Taking care of that driveway. Whatever what you, you should have do. properly done well, since you have, have a child for. is get one of those push mowers. Yeah, so, that <laughs> and that way you teach your kid mower? the lessons that you need to teach him. He did get a push mower? No. Just an FYI, do not yes. buy an electric, uh, just like a hand regular electric mower if you live in a place with high humidity. 
yeah. uh, because you literally cannot cut the grass at any time of the day because yeah. either in the morning you're going to have the dew soggy, the... you know, those do right? So you got soggy yeah. grass. Uh, in the, you know, during the middle of the day, it's extremely hot, so you can't mow the lawn at that time. And then towards the end of the day, it usually rained at some point, and you still can't mow the lawn. So you end up just like hoping and praying that there's one day that you can actually mow the lawn and you know, your grass that? is extremely tall. I'm going to go out on a limb day. and ask, is uh, is this a, a self-learned lesson you're handing out? <laughs> it is It is indeed a self-learned lesson. I bought one of those stupid electric lawn mowers. Excellent was, guess, Grumpy. That was a big mistake. <laughs> you win a charge. Big. So and now, the, now the, I pay somebody to mow my lawn. Godson, did you get well, a look, pre-order on that Charizard, Grumpy? Did I get what? A pre-order on that Funko Pop Charizard yet? <clears throat> Allie, uh, mute your listening device right now. Yes, I did twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> oh, I, I want her to come in right now behind him right now, just slap, and then walk away. You already heard well, what, what happens in this relationship off camera. So this is true. Yeah. I guess I could say I did get something for the week. I did get one of those as well. So I the, got to pre-order the, Funko? the Zard. Yes. Nice. I you did pre order the Zard too, but you know what's gonna be crazy we is Blastoise. Well, they're going to come out with that, but I'm wondering like all the hype for the Funko collectors, you guys, you know, know like the the diamond versions and the flocked versions and all that can you imagine the hype when they announce the venusaur you know blastoise and charizard flocked and then diamonds i'm just like i'm not sure i'm ready for what i'm not even going to worry about it because i'm not on i got i'm not I'm not worried about it at all because I'm sure Grumpy's going to find one for me and send it to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I mean, that's the thing. I'm a good friend. I'm out here, you know, well, grinding for you guys. But I mean, like, for me, I don't really care about that. The only one that I really want that's um, the diamond version is that Vaporeon, Vaporeon, and I'm likely never going to have it unless somebody, you know, feels I mean, yeah, the, the price just keeps going up. Send it to me. But, yeah, I'm not going to. It's not already hit three figures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's that's way too much for me. So, I, so I, and I only is, bought that squirrel because I walked into my GameStop and, and, and they it just happened, happened to have it on the shelf. So why not? So this is the Trading. thing that bothered you me. Go, with, uh, good luck. Yeah. The value of that Vaporeon is high, but this is the thing that killed me was when we went to get the Squirtle originally, like the first place I was able to find it. We walk up. There's two guys in front of me. My friend shows up. So now we're. You know, I'm spot three, he's spot four, and like he brought someone so that we have, you know, three, four, and five secured. And all of a sudden, this group of people walks over because we're in the mall and they just get in front of us and they look at us and they're like, we were already here and all this. And I'm kind of like, I don't know how I'm going to react if they say we don't have enough squirtles and I don't get one. Like, my mind's going to, and, and like, and this is over squirtle. That's <laughs> not even just my favorite. <laughs> Well, like it's kind of one of those. We say Charizard. I mean, exactly. If it was like a Charizard, like especially a special release, like a, like a diamond or a flock, and all of a sudden they looked at me and they were like, "Oh, what do you want?" Because that's how they did it. So before they opened the gate, they were like, "You know, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want?" So they could like basically tell you basically, you know, whether you're going to get it or not. And like, if it was a Charizard and they'd have been like, "Oh, sorry, that last one went to the guy right in front of you," I probably would have immediately been like. This group of people right here has five seconds to undo the mistake they just made because my mind is just like like having short circuiting and you know, thunder I don't, dies is coming after you. Yeah, like I'm about to have to drop kick somebody because uh, you know what I mean. And it's well, like about to go that? full on Ricky from how did, they prove, Park how did they prove they were ahead of you? How did they? Prove they, they didn't. Ahead they just you? said that they went to Hot Topic right around the corner to check their release and like get tickets that they thought they were going to get. Well, they that's were gone. Cool. Like, that's yeah, yeah, so yeah. You, yeah, if you leave the line, you're gone. Exactly. Yeah. Nobody said anything. Like nobody oh, said anything. Why didn't you? Been like, You're the no, biggest dude there. I, I That's they the problem. All though, the time like, at my store. Oh my god, it pisses me off. I'm like you're not in line. I'm not helping you the, until you're in line. And that's the thing is, I don't <laughs> like being confrontational because the thing I've learned, most people oh, think that like you know what I mean. Like they just they just don't think I guess, and they get all sassy. And I'm just like at that point in time, I would start just like talking in like some mumbo jumbo, and they'd be like, "What's wrong?" And I'd be like. I, I, my brain wants me to kill you. I don't understand. <laughs> like, my brain doesn't know why you're disrespecting I would have. I would have went nuts if that well, was me. I was like, like there's so no my, way that would have flew. My friend's a lot more confrontational. So he was like, do you want me to say something to the lady? And I was like, well, let's see if we can actually get one before it's a problem. 
and like luckily we all got one, so it wasn't a problem. But he like he has no problem oh, saying I anything. Take that, I, so. I still would have. Yeah, I would have made a scene there. I've been like, yeah, I would have. Either awkward because like two of them had kids on strollers and stuff. And I'm just like, floor. you know, like like I said, two of them had like kids with strollers, and I'm just like, I, I'm gonna have to tell little Billy here. I'm about to disrespect your dad because, like, <laughs> you know, he's about to get a stone cold stunner here right in front of GameStop. I, I hate to say it, Grumpy, and I mean it with the utmost love, but That's... your wife is correct. About what? Do, oh. do the off <laughs> scroll, scroll to the top of the chat. Oh, my gosh. It's another com conversation for another day. Don't worry about it. <laughs> she, she's well, I, think, I, think, I think pretty much every conversation at this point is uh, for another day. I think we should probably wrap this one up. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I, I don't really don't know how we got to the point where we're at right now, starting with the whole. I mean, we didn't even talk the about the thing. whole Pokemon Center Badoof Charizard thing either. So I, I got I'll one. Save that for another one. I still haven't gotten the email. So I don't want to well, hear to be it. clear, it's Badoof, not Charizard. Until they Badoof no, right, and Badoof. you get a Charizard. They can say Badoof all they want, but it's Charizard. I don't it's care. a Badoof. Well, I'm it's definitely a Badoof. Badoof. I don't care about the Charizard. Yeah, the Charizard is useless. I might even take a Sharpie and like whatever. You won't though. If you don't care so much, why don't you give me that uh that graded Charizard you have? No, I, I think I'll battle that for that one there. Yeah, I will give it to you for fifteen hundred pennies. Thousand dollars. As as the person in our live stream said, I'll give it to you. Uh, I'll give you fifteen hundred doll hairs. <laughs> I mean, I would take that deal. We just want to say one last thing to you people listening on the audio side. <laughs> you people, that sounds so bad. We love you. <laughs> we love you so much. We love all of you. Well, this you is getting weird now. It was somebody people. on the audio side that won the giveaway, so you got to give it up to them. Yep. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, see, yeah, that's, that's proof. You can come over from the audio side, and you can also go over to the audio side from YouTube. It's great. We They're sound really exclusive. Yeah, exactly. Ooh, yeah. Also, I sound quick, better no matter what. For everyone uh, of our even listeners or whatever, if you caught the Pokemon Direct or Nintendo Direct, comment below what you thought of the, uh, the Legends of Arceus. Mm, yes. That's going to be a good. That's, that might be a good topic for the next podcast, maybe. Yes. yes. We're going to save so that, that one. So, that, put so that Harley has nothing to talk about. He could be the quiet one. <laughs> we like uh, teasing Harley in that aspect. So play but, a game, hey, you old guy. That that's gonna that's gonna do it for today's episode. I mean, we could keep going on and on and on for hours. Really, we you need know, to make a think, Pokemon pod. We could, we could, but I think people's. Uh, I, I don't think it was inspired really wants to hear about the holes in the pants and whatnot anymore. So I think that was the best part of the podcast. You also in all honesty, I don't holes know. Holes in your pants from thunder thighs. Listen, well, hey, everybody, hashtag team thighs. Well, hey, hashtag. I, we, we greatly appreciate everybody who, who comes out and listens to us. You know, we, um, we very much do. Tide, Spotify, Apple, iTunes. Uh, Even though Ren wasn't that. there, we had a great turnout for the live giveaway announcement. <laughs> Look, I, I was <laughs> worth there it. Insecure. I had nothing. I, could, oh, I, I tried something in a little bit. I wasn't bagging on you. I'm just saying, like, I know I know your, uh, your pretty face, much like mine, brings in a crowd. These old guys here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I, I don't even have a comment for that. So <laughs> thanks again everybody for uh joining us tonight. But that's gonna Bye. do it. We will see you guys on the next one. See ya. Peace out. <laughs>